Hello everyone, welcome back. And this video today is brought to you in part by 4Patriots.com. 4Patriots.com has sent this to me for free, amongst other things I've showed you in the past, upon my request to check out some cool stuff and to give you something for video material. Maybe you're unaware of some stuff like this. For instance, 4Patriots.com in the past had sent me the solar tactical flashlight, the Halo XT, which you can charge out in the sun. You could charge it USB. You could charge your device from this as a battery bank. You could break glass, all kinds of stuff. You could boil water in the sun or cook food with the solar uh, sun, sun kettle, the 4 Patriots sun kettle. And I made a video on this as well. I boiled water in about an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, less than that, actually. Uh, hour and 10 minutes. And, uh, you know, I'm not one of those survivalists or boondockers or the end of the world is near or zombie apocalypse. No, I just have a fascination for just being prepared. That started with my ham radio over the years. Always have, I mean, I mean, I got battery banks. Look, this one I've been using for four Patriots. It said, check this out. And I can show you a, a video in itself on what the difference is between this and some other ones. But look, I got battery banks everywhere. They're all over the place. I got rechargeable batteries out the wazoo. I could sustain radio communications and have solar panels and portable antennas and all that stuff. But what did K6UDA radio say uh, to me one time? He said, you can have all radios in the world, but if you don't have food and water, what good are they? That's why I'm going to show you in another video my four-week survival kit that I have, the 4 Patriots sent. I'm going to check that out and just show you all about that. But anyways, let's get back into the tactical radio here. A bunch of features. Uh, I'll show you about it. We'll change the camera around. Three ways to power this. Uh, solar, USB, charge it, USB, or it's got a hand crank. Okay? And we're going to show you uh, what it does. I'll give you the frequencies of the shortwave bands that it covers and uh, the you know all the other stuff. So... Let's check this out. This is the Liberty Band Tactical Solar Radio. Thank you to 4Patriots.com for sending this to me. First thing you're thinking is, well, if I'm a natural disaster, how am I powering this? Well, first off, you could plug this in to charge it. Okay, mini USB, and you'll see a USB here, which is actually acts as a battery bank to charge another device um, if you plug into this, okay? So you could charge it first, and what you're charging is under this, there is, oops, it comes with a 600 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt lithium ion battery. And these are not included, but I threw in three additional AAA rechargeable batteries. I have rechargeable batteries out the wazoo, okay? So I have plenty of power in this thing. Now, let's say you have nothing to charge it with. Well, you have a solar panel on top. Now, not as efficient. I mean, this is a little solar panel. But uh, you could definitely keep this thing uh, up to operating voltage if you're only using radio because radio uh, uses very low current drain, whereas like the output for the uh, USB battery bank would be a higher output or the weather alert that's on here. Putting it in weather alert mode uses more power than just radio. So you could charge it in the sun, okay? And if you don't have some way to plug it in or charge it in the sun because you're in a building, well, you can... Do a hand crank. This is called a dynamo. You basically flip the handle up, turn it like this for about two minutes, and give it a break. Okay, because two minutes it'll get hot in there. A dynamo is basically uh, like a little generator. I have some of those in my ammo can kit that I showed you. You can, you know, the little dynamos you can sit here and crank. Now, again, without that battery in here, you can't just sit here and crank it and listen to the radio. You got to have some sort of that little battery in here, and that's easily available if that one doesn't last after a few years, you can replace it, all right? So plug it in, solar or hand crank. And you have, you may say, well, I've seen something just like that on Amazon, which is very cheap, but I'm telling you right now, it's a very poor quality. I've already had one. I do have one, it's in right behind me in this uh, uh, closet back here in my ammo can that Eric sent, but it's nothing like this, okay? So it has a little antenna on here, of course. And if you don't know how to use the radio or what your local frequencies are for your radio stations, you might want to get that because in a natural disaster, you wouldn't know unless you're just scanning. But if you have a certain radio station that covers news or uh, life events, you know, hurricanes, as in my situation, 101.7 and uh, some other stations will have coverage of hurricanes. If nothing else works, you can rely on the radio. All right. <clears throat> now, speaker on the front gets quite loud. Not so bassy, a little tinny, but hey, you can hear it. I mean, if you're out in the garden, you're planting plants or you're hiking, you can clip this thing here, 
right, on your backpack, or you can clip it on a little tree limb or something and keep it hanging out there when you're doing your gardening. And it's plenty loud to hear it outside, so that's a good thing. On the front, you have an LED flashlight. Just push the button here, give a flashlight. If you hold it, this is gonna be loud. All right, that's what it sounds like when you have a weather alert. All right, so if you put it in weather alert mode and there's a tornado warning or there's a uh, uh, any kind of natural disaster that the NOAA puts out on the weather alerts, it's gonna pop up on here and it's gonna go real loud and you're gonna hear the voice following that. And I have a weather uh, a video on that as well on how weather stations work with the same technology, S-A-M-E. Check that out on my channel. So <clears throat> I'm gonna take this manual for a second because I wanna show you the frequencies of the short wave and I can't remember all of them. All right, but this does come with the charging cord, it does come with a manual, and uh, it's very straightforward to get this thing operating. Um, directions are in here, very simple. A couple things I'll show you that I found. Uh, but here, let's see. Let's go to these specifications right here. Now here's the radio bands. I'll put this here in case you want to pause the video and check it out. And in case you're visually impaired, uh, it so does AM from 520 kilohertz to 1710, so the entire AM broadcast. It does do FM, the entire FM broadcast, 87.5 to 108 megahertz. Weather band from 162.400 to 162.55. That's all your standard channels for those. Then we got shortwave. So this is shortwave, shortwave one, shortwave two, and so on, all the way up to eight. So basically, uh, 5.950 megahertz, which... Wow, I used to broadcast my podcast on there. Uh, 5.950 used to uh, um, broadcast my, sh my podcast on WRMI to Northern Africa and Europe. So uh, there. So 5.950 to 21 megahertz, then 5.95 to 6.2 megahertz. So there, it's adjusting the, the, uh, the wavelength or the band, you know, medium wave and short wave and all that. 7.1 to 7.3. So it'll actually receive... Shortwave in the 40 meter band, but probably on AM, not sideband. Don't see any sideband activity on this. 9.5 to 9.9, 11.65 to 12.05, and I'll show you again. It's all in here. So these are the shortwave. And you may say, well, you know what? Shortwave is dead. Nobody listens to radio anymore. Au contraire, okay? There's a reason that AM and FM and shortwave stations still exist because when all else fails, Radio is there. I've told you that a thousand times. That's why I'm a ham radio operator. And that shortwave station, unless it gets decimated by some act of God that has no chance at all ever of surviving, you'll have a way to listen to what's going on. And let's not, re let's not forget the most important thing. Entertainment. Now, as a, pro a professional hurricane you know, expert, a professional Floridian, I could tell you that if you have no TV to watch and have kids or you have nothing to do, you're going to get bored. What do bored people do? They freak out. They get angry. They get restless. Why not just turn on and listen to some music? Because there is going to be music uh, playing on the radio during a hurricane. Not everybody, a lot of these stations now are automated. It's not everybody is broadcasting uh, weather information. That's a fact. Okay? So, um, one other thing that I want to show you is right here, there's actually a headphone jack. So if you don't like the speaker or you want to use headphones to be quiet, save the power, you can use headphones to just keep in your ear. If you're camping, you want to be quiet. There's also a charge indicator here, a little yellow light that will uh, illuminate different intensity based on how much solar is coming into the top of the radio. The brighter the yellow LED, the more sun that you got coming in, faster the charge rate uh, and the reset button. So. Uh, in a nutshell, you would turn this on with a power button. Extend your antenna, of course. And and I will also tell you that I have had this. I don't know if I said it before. I have had this since about December when they sent it to me upon my request. But I haven't gotten around to making a video. But I have used this. I have taken it. I have, uh, you know, uh, let it go dead and see how long it lasts. I mean, it lasted days. Not playing radio. The standby is like four months what I had. I mean, I, I'd reach over and, you know, and grab this, do a little crank, one, two, three, for a minute or two when I was sitting at the computer. It's always stayed there with a clock. It does have an alarm function on here as well, so you can use it as an alarm clock. But um, it definitely uh, has a, a, a quite a bit of a battery life for something like this, considering 
that you can put extra batteries and charge them solar and have the hand crank, okay? So you turn it on, I'm on FM mode. If you hit, go up here, if you hit mode again, you'll be in shortwave mode, okay? Then you can hold this button, all right, and uh, change, you know, different shortwave bands by holding the mode button. Or you can hit mode again. Now you're in weather, and I'll turn this up here. Okay. All right, and then you have mode again. Now it says ALT. All right, ALT is your alert. So weather alert doesn't work if you're listening to FM radio as how I understand it in the manual. If you want it to be a strict, a strictly a weather alert device where you hear this. Okay, if you want to hear that when you have a tornado coming or something, leave it in alert mode. All right. If not, put it back to weather or AM or FM. All right. Uh, I don't have enough time in this video to go through the shortwave reception of this. Plus, I'm inside. Somebody had asked on another video I saw that what would the how is the shortwave reception? Um, if I go to shortwave, let's see if I can find one real quick. I mean, because the the one thing I don't like is it's very slow to tune. All right. I can go five kilohertz at a time, right? Or I can hold it, but it doesn't really go too fast. So it's going to take a while to go from one end of the band to the other. Now, uh, during the day, I, I know that, you know, inside here, it's going to be almost impossible with this little antenna to hear the shortwave. Outside, a lot better. But during the, the night is really when this thing picks up better shortwave than during the day. And the same thing happens with another radio I have over there. I'll show you that later in another video. Uh, but this thing is just scanning like this. This is the scan speed. If, if you're interested in that, that's how fast it's scanning. Um, and then it'll just keep going and going until it finds a signal. There is no memories. So you won't be able to, to store a, a memory. And that's kind of one negative for me was because it, you know if there's some stations that I want to keep, I don't want to have to scroll five, six megahertz you know, in order to, uh, in order to um, find a, a shortwave station. So with it off, if you want to set the time or the alarm, turn the unit off, hold the mode button, you go into your 12 or 24 hours, if you see that, all right, set your clock, and then you can also go into alarm and turn the alarm on or off. So it's good to have your alarm clock if you are camping, uh, if, you know, if you want to use this outside, you get busy doing stuff, you want to just keep it on alarm, whatever, uh, that can happen, all right? Overall, with the, with the clasp here, the metal clasp, and the case, which seems to, I haven't dropped this yet, I haven't really had it in the elements, it's not waterproof, um, it, it's not submersible, I mean, if it got a little splashed, I'm going to guess it would be all right the way this feels in construction. But they say don't bring it by water. So next to the pool, fine. Falls in the pool, no good. Starts raining, probably not. All right? But it does feel a lot better than that one I have behind me in that uh, closet I have, which is very, very flimsy. This one, really, let's give it a bend test. I don't know if this is actually a good idea, but, I mean, it's it's solid. It's not creaking and cracking. I mean, it looks like it's a really solid uh, item. So, the, the, like I said, the pluses are the fact that you have three modes of, of powering it. Plugging it in, charging with the batteries, solar in the sun, or a hand crank with the dynamo. That's a plus for me. Also, the shortwave, because, again, um, the one that's behind me in that closet doesn't have shortwave, and a lot of them on Amazon don't. They only give you AM and FM. So, I like that this has all the shortwave bands. Um, and if you're really crafty, for those ham radio operators, probably listen to some 40 meter action, even though it's not a sideband. Maybe you'll be able to understand. You might be able to hear some CW on it and listen to that if you're bored, you know. Um, flashlight is a plus. I like the flashlight. Rather bright. Uh, the, the one thing I don't like is no memories and uh, very slow in tuning. But, but that's not really a game changer. I mean, this, for me, I'm not going to be using this as entertainment uh, as much. I can take one of my handhelds, like my ICOM ID52, put it on weather alert and FM radio. But that's a $600, in, uh, $600 handheld. This right here is, is uh, you know, affordable enough for everybody. And the link is 
in the description below, along with some other stuff like the flashlight and the solar kettle and some deals that are coming and uh, and more. So I think that this radio for, and I'll show you the box here just in case if I missed anything here. So USB out, the features on this thing. USB output for charging you know, for phones or possibly uh, like, like flashlights. I wish I had one right here. I have those USBs that you plug into a USB port, turns into an LED flashlight, draws like nothing. You could stick one on the side and it probably wouldn't really draw as much as this flashlight and you'd have a light when you're camping or something. LED flashlight, earphone jack, uh, real-time clock with alarm function, telescopic antenna, carry clip, AM, FM, shortwave, and seven NOAA channels. Um, NOAA weather warning, and like I said, multiple options for charging. DC to a DC or AC, solar power, hand crank, and AAA battery backup. So I really think this is um, a really uh, good thing to have. I, You know, and this is just me being honest, it's a radio, and it has charging options like solar and hand crank and stuff, and even a USB output. So I love that. I've been around radios since I was nine. So yes, if my dad could have seen this in his day, holy cow! But what do you mean you could crank this? What do you mean it list? You know, solar power. Wow, he would have loved it. But maybe this is new to you, and it would be exciting. Uh, this is it's great to have it. I'm gonna keep this in my arsenal with my. Go kits and my bags and my life straw. Oh, I got to show you that video. My life straw. How you can drink out of the puddle out back. 99.99999% antibacterial. Another cool thing to have. Am I ever going to have to use it? I don't know. I don't think so. I hope not. But if I do, it's right here. And thank you to 4 for sending this. This is the, again, the uh, Liberty Band Tactical Solar Radio. And you can pick one up at the link description below. So thanks for watching. More videos are on the way. Take care. Ham Radio Concepts is brought to you by HamRadioPrep.com. It's never been easier to learn about Ham Radio before you take the exam. And Ham Radio Prep makes it fun and guarantees your success. Visit HamRadioPrep.com. Use the code ERIC20 to instantly save 20% off every course you buy. Remember the name, HamRadioPrep.com.